Hey guys, Chris, Ironhead Garage. Well, we're back on the old truck now. Got the cross member removed, master cylinder, all the brake lines. We got the shocks removed. Getting ready to chop this frame up pretty soon. But uh, I wanted to figure out my wheelbase. I know the old 55 gasser, it's 115 inches. The 50 GMC truck it's 114 inches so I want my wheelbase back where it goes within you know a smidgen or so so uh, I made center marks on the top of my king pins and then the center of my axle there so I did that on both sides got it there hard to see black felt pin and I got it there so then I went and uh, I got this eighth inch bar here. This is a nice straight piece. This is actually for uh, my cross member. I'll do my ladder bars one day. I got to get on that too. But uh, I got the straight edge. And I squared it up down there. Squared it up on that uh, that rectangle pipe, rectangle stock. And I hit that center part, center mark on my uh, top of my kingpin, and I did that on both sides. Then I got my tape measure out. Of course, I made a mark there. Got them pretty darn true. So then I got my tape measure out, and I went to that uh, that cab mount that back there, which they're nice and straight. I had a. Uh, 28 inches 28 inches on uh, both sides so seems like I got it pretty true whoop there went the tape no good now <laughs> so I got a couple marks on my frame here now but those will go away but I do got some reference points to measure back to to get my um, my wheelbase right I do got a little map here I made the measurements I took from the firewall to the front of the rad support 31 inches I got from the front of the rad support to that same uh, cab mount 46 and a half and then uh, I want to put my engine back in the same spot so my drive line will work don't want to have don't want to have one of them made again but uh, 10 and a quarter from the cab cross member to the end of the tail shaft Back there, I even wrote it up there on the bottom of the cab. And then the radiator support 19 inches from the floor up to the bottom. And that'll change a little bit because i got to level this thing up a lot better when uh, I get my new jack stands. But with those measurements there, I'll be able to put that, um, that rad support around here somewhere. Back that way. I'll be able to build that rad support right back in the same spot. So my fenders will line up and my inner fenders will work and all the the grill and everything should work and the hood should shut just right as long as i get everything right back and forth up and down it all should come together so these subframes here when you put them in and you compress the suspension they go back the wheelbase will actually go back three quarters to an inch back so when i cut this frame I'll have to make it uh, three quarters to an inch long, the wheelbase. So, but when you put the engine in it and all the weight back on it, and those A arms go up the springs collapse, the wheel will actually move back a little bit, three quarters to a, an inch or so. And then on these subframes here, you can use that uh, grease fitting there for center of the wheelbase. So that's what I'll be measuring to. To set my wheelbase and then when they align it you put the shims the shims go on the top of the I don't know if you can see it's kind of dark and the a-arms here and when they shim it in alignment your wheelbase does move a little bit because it kicks your spindle out or in which moves it this way or that way but just a minute mount maybe a quarter inch or so but my wheelbase will be right, and that's what counts. I don't want it three inches off or even a couple inches off. I want it nice and centered up 
like the old uh, 55 Chevy is. So now I can remove this uh, straight axle. I think I'll leave the springs and drop the axle. It's a lot lighter and easier to move. Then with the springs all hooked up, I'll get that removed and uh, then take the springs off. All right, guys. Hopefully my jack stand show up real quick. <laughs> I'll be back. All right. Well, I got that straight axle out. Still got to take the springs off, but uh, man, that thing is still heavy. So I don't want to hurt my back packing this damn thing outside. So uh, I'm going to take off the drums, take off the hubs, and uh, take them spindles off. Take these other two bolts here loose on the bottom and then that whole uh, spindle will come off and that'll make it probably 40 pounds each probably for each side so a lot of lighter to get out of the garage then I'll get them springs off but uh, I got my fender out of the back of the truck check these out I scored yeah some original GMC emblems for the fenders and the V8 these are pretty cool and uh, they've been painted, so I'm going to use some paint stripper or let them soak. Use this paintbrush with some paint stripper and uh, get all this paint off of here. And I think whoever painted these back in the day did a good job because uh, it kind of preserved them. They're not pitted, there's no rotten uh, spots on them. And I hit it right here, the paint was uh, flaked off a little bit. I hit it with some of that triple lot steel wool. I think they're going to look pretty damn good, but uh, I'll show you guys where they go. Got a killer deal on these, too. For uh, shiny ones, they go for 250 bucks just for two of these GMC emblems on eBay. Just crazy. But uh, these fenders here are welded up. You can see, if I can see it or not, right there and there. So the emblem goes up top. And right there are two holes that are welded up. So I don't know why they welded them up. Maybe they got broke back in the day. But uh can't see exactly where they go. But I'll, I'll re-drill them from the back. That M1 goes there. So that's going to look cool. And then uh, the V8 M1 goes somewhere right around there. Right below the, the GMC M1. So they kind of go like like that if we check out an old GMC that's I think believe that's how they are but uh, when I drill those holes out that'll show me right exactly where they go so I'm gonna get these in a in an old turkey pan or something I got around here and uh, put some paint stripper on them and let them soak and keep brushing that stuff on and I think it should lift this paint off and then I can polish them up with some uh, triple lot steel wool see how they come out it came with all the hardware I'm working on getting a little tabletop sandblaster so I can sandblast all this stuff but uh, we'll see if I get that guy's got one on marketplace he's got stuff for sale on there but then they don't message you back so I don't know what the deal is with people but uh, we're gonna get stripping those get them cleaned up see how they look not sure show it in this video or not them all finished up but uh i'm gonna get them hubs off if i can get this axle out of the shop and get those springs off my new jack stands are on the way so they're coming all right guys I'm back on hey guys well i just wanted to come back and show you i was taking these leaf springs off Man, the only thing that holds these on there, the shackles, they just uh, press on there like that. So I can get it on there. Whoa. And the only thing that holds that shackle together on those pins is a 5 16 carriage bolt. Look at that. So that goes through the center like that and squeezes it onto this piece here got a grease cert and it's threaded it's kind of crazy how it works on these old trucks but that's all the way tight so I guess you leave it turn a little bit so it can swing 
but uh, this side here is seized and it's got a greaser in it. And I tried to grease it, and I wonder why I didn't take grease. It was frozen up, but yeah, pretty crazy how those work. And it's got a greaser there too, and they just press on there. And then that carriage bolt goes through there and keeps them squeezed together. Pretty crazy. But I did receive my other big red jack stands. I got them back there. So I got six jack stands on this old girl now. And I got the frame nice and level here in the front. It's a smidgen off, but uh, I'll true it all up. I did end up, uh, my shop's getting tighter. I did end up getting that little blast cabinet. There it is. Yeah, pretty cool. The gloves are good in it. And uh, I got to order a light for it. And I silicone the inside of it all the way around there. Uh, the film got a little grainy looking. Siliconed it all to keep the dust from sneaking out. So it's got a little vent there on the side. I'm going to try to pipe that to a fan going out that window or something. But yeah, pretty cool. Gonna get that working. So, uh, guess the next thing is get these springs out of the shop, get them stored somewhere. I might try to sell that straight axle. I just set it up there and I got all the parts underneath my 55. I think I'm gonna cut the steering column, cut it somewhere around there, get that steering column, uh, or get the steering box off of the frame. Probably cut this cross member out of here. I'm not going to use that. I'm going to take this thing out piece by piece. So I don't have to try to get it out that door right now. It's supposed to be uh, some death cold coming. Three degrees for a high Fahrenheit. So that's pretty darn cold. But uh, alright. I'm back on it. Alright. Well I got that steering box cut off of there. And that's what it looked like after I cut it. So that shaft goes all the way up through the steering column housing. So that's what it looks like after I cut it right there. Shaft slid down about an inch or so, but I got a measurement up above where the steering wheel bolts on. So I'll be able to set it just right for length. So once I get that subframe grafted on here, I'll figure out where I want to cut this. And I'll cut this housing again. And I'll put that C10 support bearing on here for the steering column. And uh, that will support this shaft nice and tight. Then I'll cut this shaft again the right length when I figure out what it is. And uh, I got one of these here. This is a cheap Chinese one, but uh, it's three-quarter double D. So then I'll scribe me a couple lines on here. For uh, on the bottom and then up here for the distance of the flat spots I want and I'll grind it and then I use my files and make it real nice and get the slip in there good so you only want that shaft to go to this lip right here you don't want it to go down inside here anymore or it could bind up when you go to steer so that wouldn't be good but after I get that to slip on there and I'll take these set screws out and I'll mark it with a felt pen now I'll hit it with my center punch and then drill it with the drill bit about the same size of that uh, set screw there. And then slide it on there. You want them, uh, them depth of them holes to go down about an eighth of an inch or so. So you got more bite when you go to tighten down them set screws. And always put red Loctite on all this stuff. When you go to tighten it up, you don't want one coming loose on you. But uh, this is a cheap Chinese one. It's about 40 bucks. When I built the 55, I put Borgson ones on there, and they're, I think they're about 140 bucks. so I'll buy some good ones for this. These are good for mocking up. Try not to use these cheap ones for your uh, your hot rods for good, man. You imagine one of these breaking at 60, 70 miles an hour down the highway. That would be bad news. But uh, So that's that part of it. And you can see it's got a plate here, and this is, I think it's rubber coated on the inside. And then this is two pieces. This piece here, and it screws to the firewall. And it's just a body panel thickness. It's not very thick. And you can see this. 
kind of walks around a little bit. So I'm gonna get some thicker stock metal probably and uh, make a bigger plate here. And then drill a hole in it. I'll bolt this real good and then drill a hole in it. And I believe I have another steering column support clamp Tri-5 Chevy style that I'll work on here. I believe it will. If it don't, then I'll get a piece of pipe and cut it in half and make a clamp. But uh, the Tri-5 is like a clamshell clamp with a nut down here. It kind of pinches it. And then it has a bracket where a couple good bolts here that locks it real tight. So that's the way I'm going to do that. Well, there ain't no going back now, boys. She ain't going to steer very good. Or ride very good. <laughs> All right, I'm back on it. Well, I went ahead and uh, took that cross member off of there. I left that old transmission one in there for holding the frame. And the cab mounts are holding it. I did cut a bar here. I was going to weld on the top of the frame. But uh, I want to work that uh, that frame top rail right there. Flatten that out first. And I wouldn't be able to do it if that was welded on there. And when I took this all apart, it never sprung apart or anything. So it's pretty solid. I think I'll leave that transmission cross member in there for a little while just to help hold the frame and it does have the cab mount so that's holding it too but these got those uh big rivets in there this one had a bolt here the only one bolt in the whole system here and then there is one there 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 and there and that's what these guys are here big three-eighths rivets so i uh i cut the heads off with my sawzall and finished them off with the angle grinder then knocked them out with that big punch there one just about flew over there and hit the 55 <laughs> so got this side here all of them cut off so i gotta grind them down a little bit more and knock them through but i got four of them there so there's one there and there's one back there that are kind of hidden that you can't get a cutting wheel to. And there's the top. And then the, there's the back one back there. And I'm all out of acetylene for my torches. So I got to figure out how to get them out or go get some acetylene. But uh, I get those brackets off of there. And then I could deal with the rest of this frame. I'm going to probably just cut it here, cut it here. Then cut it long out here somewhere just so I can get this out of the garage and uh, get that subframe over here and, and do some uh, hot rod calculation make sure I uh, do this right so oh check it out I did finish up one of the emblems look at that before and after yeah it came out pretty nice man pretty mint that paint sure did save it from getting corroded then I'm gonna polish these up with some uh, with some of that Meguiar's polish right there, make them real nice and shiny. But uh, we'll end this video here. It's getting pretty long again. I'm gonna battle those off of there. Then uh, next time I'll cut this frame off, get that subframe over here, drug over here, and uh, see how it goes. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate you. You guys take it easy. Stay warm. We'll see you next time watching the old shows.